Hey what's up guys, I'm gonna here and welcome back to a brand new Unity tutorial here on the channel. So I noticed that a few of you guys were surprised that I am back to making Unity tutorials after everything that happened with the whole Unity um, runtime fee situation. And in case you didn't see, I actually made a video talking about how I am gonna, you know, most likely come back to making Unity tutorials since I do notice that a lot of you guys still do use Unity. And, you know, um, I kind of feel bad that I did stop making Unity tutorials since I know that a lot of you guys liked watching my tutorials and liked learning from them. So I wanted to come back to share my knowledge, you know, of, you know, what I've learned in Unity over the years. And, uh, yeah, that's why I'm making Unity tutorials again, because whilst I'm not going to be using Unity to make newer games of my own after ULEM Shadow Memories, I will still use it to update my current Unity games I have made, but when it comes to making newer games, um, I'm going to be using Godot from now on to make my newer games. So, uh, yeah. But I want to continue to make Unity tutorials for you guys, and that is why I am back. So anyways, uh, in today's tutorial, um, I'm going to be showing you guys uh, how to save the state of an object in Unity using C Sharp, and specifically um, the method of saving we're going to be using is player prefs. So uh, player prefs, for those of you who don't know, it's like a method of saving data or data, however you want to say it. It's a method of saving data in uh, Unity. It's basically Unity's uh, method of saving data. And I use player prefs for a lot of my games when it comes to saving data and stuff like that. There are many different ways of saving data in Unity, but I'm going to be showing you guys how to use player prefs today. So if you guys do enjoy this tutorial, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. And yeah, let's get right into it. So yeah, um, I have made a few tutorials, or at least one tutorial before, on player prefs. You know, like how to save certain things. Like I think I did a video on how to save a player's position, which I used player prefs for that. And I've done another player prefs video uh, before as well. But yeah, in, in today's video, I'm going to be specifically teaching you guys how to save the state of an object using player prefs. And the way I'm going to be doing this is just like how I do in Bodhi and Friends as well, so yeah. So here we have a door. Now let's say, for example, you open this door and then you exit your game, and then you go back into your game, and then you find that the door is open again. That's what I'm going to be teaching you guys today as an example for this player prefs tutorial. What, what, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be saving the state of this door. And you guys will be able to do this with all your doors in your game. It's pretty easy to do. And in fact, you can uh, use this method that I'm going to be teaching you guys today with the door, with any object. You could do it with light switches, um, you know, any any sort of object which you want to sa save the state of. So uh, yeah, hopefully uh, this does help you guys out. And how about now we get right into it. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to go into the door script. Alrighty, so here we are in the door script. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a new variable. Now this variable is going to be a public string, and this is just going to be called the, uh, we'll just call this the object ID. We'll just call it object ID. There we go. Or you could call it object name, whatever you want to call it. You know, it doesn't really matter what you call this variable. Call it whatever you like, I'm just calling it object ID. So what this is going to be used for is it's going to be used to save the specific, uh, you know, door in the game. So let's say, for example, you have many doors, right? Um, each door will have its own specific uh, ID or name. So then when the player pref saves it, uh, that specific door is saved. So yeah. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go avoid start. So basically uh, what void start is, uh, is it's basically the start of a scene, so when the scene first loads up, uh, code that's in this uh, void will, uh, you know, execute. So we will just leave this for now, since what I want to do is I want to uh, actually implement some code first that is in going to be in the uh, uh, public void open close section. So basically what this void here does is this is used for opening and closing the door. So what I'm going to do here is um, just underneath the, uh, you know, uh, anim.setTrigger line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write player prefs. 
make sure you use a uh, capital P's for that and then dot set int and then what we're going to do here is we're going to go object ID since uh, what what this is is it's just going to be the name of the player pref that we're saving so we're going to have the object ID here since it's a string and then we're going to do comma and then uh, zero so basically when the door closes when toggle equals to false and then the door closes the player prefs for this specific door will be set to zero and then afterwards we're going to go player prefs dot save and boom as you can see uh this is how you save a player pref it's that simple so uh yeah anyways what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy this and then i'm gonna paste it down here in the toggle equals true section so then if the door opens this player pref for this door will equal to one and then the player pref will save and so yeah that's how you simply save the door's state and you can do that with any object basically so yeah so now what we're going to be doing up here in uh, the start void is we're going to be going if player prefs if player prefs dot has key and what this basically means is, is um so it's checking if uh, the key for this specific player pref exists so if the player pref for our door exists and player prefs dot get int object id oh, object id one and then parentheses equal to one so just to recap here if the play if so if player prefs has the um, object ID key so the uh, the key for this door here and then if the player pref uh, int so the integer of the player pref equals to one then what will happen is uh, toggle will equal to true since the door will be open and then the uh, We'll just copy this code from down here in the door open section and then just paste it here and then the door will open. We don't actually have to have the reset trigger I'm pretty sure, we just need the set trigger and then boom. There we go. So that there um, is pretty much how you save an object state in Unity using player prefs. Uh, specifically for this tutorial I showed you guys how to do it with a, a door but you can pretty much use this for any object. You know you just might need to make a few changes here and there. But yeah, and this is how I do it in Bodhi and Friends as well. You know, there's probably a few changes in Bodhi and Friends, since the door script I think is a bit different for that game. But yeah, it's overall pretty much, you know, just the same structure. So now when you're done, make sure you press Ctrl S and then you go back into the Unity Editor and then your script will do its compiling. And uh, this can take a bit of time sometimes. <clears throat> But you'll know when it says reload script assemblies that everything is all good and boom. Now what you want to do is um, on your object, so in my case the door, what you want to do is you want to now enter an ID name for it. So I'm going to call this uh, door1. And to properly test this out as well, I am actually going to like copy and paste a few doors around. Um, you know, just to test out a few of their states. So we'll have four doors and make sure with each door of yours or each object you're saving, again it can be any object that you're doing this with, um, make sure you give the uh, object ID all individual names because otherwise then the doors or the objects will then share the same ID and then it will all save into the same player pref and you don't want that at all. You all want it to save into a different player pref so then it doesn't overlap with each other. Because if one of the doors has the same name as a, another player pref, right? Then what will happen is that door will then have that other door's state. So then if that door's meant to be open, then uh, yeah. Alright, so let me just check all these names, make sure they're all different. And yeah, they're all good. Okay, there we go. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to test this out. We're going to test out the doors here. And here we are. So now we're going to open up a door. So what I've just done there is I've opened up that door and then I'm going to open up this door. And then I'm going to exit the game 
and then go back in and hopefully this all works out. And boom, as you can see, the state of these doors was saved and they are now open. So now if I close them again, and then I open up uh, this door, and then I close this door again, and then I open up this door. Let's just do another test. And boom, as you can see, the state of these doors is saved as well. So yeah, and yeah, the guys, that's pretty much it. It is that simple. It is only really just a couple lines of code. I mean, it could be more lines of code depending on what object you're doing, of course. Um, you know, uh, it's all going to be different for everyone. But yeah, overall, uh, it's pretty simple to do depending on what object you are going to be saving. And uh, yeah. So anyways guys, that is the end of this tutorial. If you did enjoy, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more. Or if you did learn something, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more. Uh, if you want to check out uh, a game that I've made, uh, be sure to probably check out Bodhi and Friends on Steam. Uh, it's only six US dollars or eight ninety nine Australian dollars, so it's uh, not expensive. It does have a couple of hours of content in it, so I think it is probably going to be worth the value if you, uh, you know, if it's worth it to you, of course. But yeah, so um, be sure to check it out and consider buying it if you want to, or if you do want to, you know, try it out for free before buying it, you can check out the uh, older demo version on Itch.io. It isn't as updated as uh you know the current game of course as the full game but you know it does give you a taste of what to expect in it and uh, also if you want to keep up to date with uh you know just anything i'm doing like my games or just want to see random stuff i'm posting be sure to check out my twitter at omegonics and yeah anyways guys again thanks you all thank you all for watching and i'll see you all soon Bye bye